gentlemen, we warmly welcome Mr. Ramneet Jain, CEO, Max Speciality Films Limited, for today's edition of Insights with Nidhi. Your 24 five years of experience in manufacturing in India and USA across verticals would have never put you to handle such an emergency as this pandemic has, we trust. Max is a major supplier of specialty packaging, labels, coating, and lamination films. We warmly welcome you again, sir, and thank you for giving us the time to share your views with our viewers. Thank you very much, Niti, and I compliment you and the entire Indy team for coming up with this novel idea. I have listened to some of the other broadcasts that you have recorded, and I've really found them very helpful uh, to be able to hear some of the views because everybody is uh, looking for inputs and cross information. So thank you for putting this together. Your words are really precious and thank you uh, very much for those. Uh, so you're very strong in speciality packaging films, uh, mainly catering to the FMCG segment. How the demand has been impacted uh, in this last three months and uh, some verticals have slowed down or some verticals have increased. What has been mm -hmm. the trend? Um, I would say Nithi that our demand has remained fairly strong. And uh, what we have been working on for the past uh, couple of years, uh, we initially, of course, there was a couple of days in the first, you know last week of March, uh, some some movement. Uh, but since then, I don't think our production quantity or uh, dispatch or the product mix has changed in any way. Uh, we were largely in speciality. Those products remain to be strong in terms of the food packaging. Um, so. I think we've seen a good, strong demand and consistently out there. Excellent, sir. Uh, you also have chemical coating lines. Uh, during this breakout, there have been a lot of innovations that have come very handy with the PPE and chemical coatings. Have you come across any such demands uh, or kind of specific requirements that have been uh, put across to you from customers? I think not specifically from our immediate customers, but yes, uh, we all looked across what we could do with regards to PP and how plastic, our plastic can be evolved. And uh, even our board was very uh, uh, open to share their views if there was anything we could do to serve the nation need at that point of time. Uh, so far, we do not have any such product. Yes, we are working on certain coatings for our regular products, uh, and we'll talk about that, but not specific to PPE as yet. Okay. Uh, any new strategic changes that you have made in your supply chain process, which were devised in the lockdown uh, time to cater to your FMCG sector, where delivery timeline is of critical importance? Uh, some process changes, some applications that you're going to kind of carry on if, after the pandemic effect has gone away? I think um, I was, I'm pretty happy to say that most of our processes remain to be strong. Yes, we did put together a more focused team to coordinate the logistics. And I think that has really given us a good service angle, which we plan to now continue and strengthen more. So uh, the communication uh, improved because of that and the tracking improved. And I think that gave a higher degree of confidence and uh, you know, clarity to our customers, which, they, which we think was very value adding for them and something which is important to them. We, we would like to continue doing. Well, uh, what was your experience in managing the labor force uh, that a uh, lot of leaders have kind of shared with us, especially in Punjab, where your plant is, there has been a curfew most of the time. So how did you manage the workforce and also carry on the production? I think this is one point which uh, I'm very proud of and I know my team is very proud of. And this is where I think the, um, it, the culture of the company comes through. Um, while many of the industry people and uh, my competitors may have had a challenge of getting the people together, we actually had a problem. We did not have this problem. Um, a, we are a company which is uh, located in the uh, suburbs or, you know, more in a remote location relative to a, a main city. So most of our workforce is staying close to the plant. Second, but even then, uh, despite some of the restrictions from the people and the local communities, we had pe we had nearly 85-90% people show up from the very first day. In fact, we had to turn down some people to say, no, we need to control football. And that really makes us proud that the loyalty that people showed 
and the commitment to the company and the feel uh, of pride to be part of an essential commodity that we can help contribute a little bit in this time of need. So we are very lucky and very proud that uh, we really did not have this problem. Even on the contractual labor side, it is largely of people who are staying close by. So we did not have that problem with it. And uh, we continue to introspect more of how do we nurture what has been the strength and add to it. So really very lucky to have this kind of uh, people and, and uh, group culture. Excellent. So I, being, a, being from the North and being a Punjabi, I would say the, the, the feeling of Sada Punjab and our kind of, you know, valor that we have to go out and do what is required for the country would have come uh, very strong there. And the planting roper, I think it's it's very spread out. I know the area myself, so they would have been uh, fortunate to actually be in that area. So you've been lucky yes. there, I guess. And I would say that uh, it, you know, the we as a company and and everybody we have left no stone unturned to maintain the safety angle, which obviously takes precedence over everything else. And that was the broad message to the team that guys, we need to follow safety and safety and safety, and then worry about the quality and then the quantity. So uh, I think people understand that and we, we took several iterative steps besides the regular uh, you know, hygiene factors and uh, there are some which have really worked as well uh, and we'd like to continue with them more. But I think uh, we can have good process, we can have good guidelines, but uh, I really, uh, really thank all my, my team and the people on the shop floor who executed it very well as well. One point which most of the leaders are actually sharing is that, yes, the main assets would are the teams in this time. So that uh, has brought out that uh, area extremely well uh, during this pandemic. Uh, so the healthcare and the pharma are very rapidly growing, as we've seen in this pandemic, extremely high growth in those areas. Uh, do you have any plans to launch any new products, offerings in this industry in the future? Uh, no, not at this time. We are uh, very consistent with our strategy that we have put in place over the past uh, two years. And uh, as of right now, we, we think we have a hands full and a, and a fairly uh, secured glide path. Uh, so we're not, not looking at pharma or healthcare at this point of time. Well taken. Uh, Max Speciality is majorly into speciality BOPP films as compared to the commodity films. Any new films that you would like to introduce in future? Oh, sure. There are lots of them. And uh, clearly, uh, we are, we made a very conscious choice that uh, we are going to play the value strategy game and not the volume game. While volume is important overall, but our investments is more in the R&D side uh, rather than putting up a higher capacities, which would, which would be plan B. Uh, so in terms of uh, the value strategy, it is only uh, natural that we should come out with strong products, which are value adding to the customer and they're willing to uh, pay a premium for that. So yes, uh, we have beefed up our R&D segment in terms of infrastructure, people, experience, experimentation. Uh, there are a couple of films that are in uh, advanced stages of uh, testing. Um, probably cannot say much about it at this point of time, but some like BOPE, uh, and also our inline coating capa capability, which is fairly unique in the world. Uh, obviously, with the need, with COVID kind of experience, we do look at anti-microbial, uh, antiviral films and how they would uh, be a greater need. And we should be able to offer some products of that to the country. Uh, besides the uh, earlier products of biodegradable or monopolymer structure. So there are some going in there. Um, some in terms of uh, uh, wider applications of insulation or um, temperature sensitivity. So there is a mixed pack, a lot of experimentation going on, but it's easy to get lost in that excitement. Uh, but we need to balance the, uh, you know, the R&D and the commercial aspects and the ultimate, what is the need of the end customer finally. So you remain focused in the niche. Okay. I, I think, yes, uh, our focus is very important for us. And um yeah i yes you could. okay you really made waves with topan and uh, topan has the best transparent barrier film possible mm -hmm. across in the world it's like if i hear it sells like hot cakes across the world uh somehow we have not seen that 
push in the Indian market with this product. Uh, has there been a reason for that? Um, yes, I um, well, yes to the fact that Topan uh, does have a very good uh, uh, transparent barrier film. And they've had it for uh, as a monopoly, not really as a monopoly, there is some competition, but really uh, large volume and largely in polyester side. And we as a BOPP company, uh, we have actually worked very closely with them and we have a OPP GL film kind of a transparent barrier product, uh, which is in the works. I think transparent barrier film is highly, uh, is a very premium film, so it has a high expense attached to it because of which the need factor in India has been a little low. And uh, just to add that, yes, there has been some sale of that in the country. With that said, uh, Topan is a very strong partner. We have very, very close interaction with them in terms of, uh, you know, variety of R&D and other, uh, other opportunities. Uh, so there is a lot of work going on transparent barrier. And I think India would grow to that need in the coming uh, few quarters. And uh, we do have a plan to, to offer that. Uh, more importantly, at the right price point, which may find some interest with the Indian uh, customers. So we shall be waiting for that for sure. Um, so. With the with the focus on the hygiene and the safety of especially the food products, applications like holography, anti counterfeit, security, even the tracking, those are really going to see a boom as we expect. Earlier also, the, a lot of focus was there, but I think now it's going to become an area where uh, demand will really rise. Uh, you have any plans of introducing uh, uh, applications in this area? Uh, yes, so uh, you're very right. Uh, so there's one segment of the food side and the one segment of traceability and communication with the about the product and the uh, counterfeiting. So on the food and hygiene side, as I mentioned, antiviral, antimicrobial, um, also anti-fog and variety of films which enhance the uh, food quality or its preservation in terms of um, it's a higher lead, higher shelf life. So there is a lot of work going on in the ultra high barrier side and uh, connected to that is the fact of, uh, you know, the recyclability aspect where we have products which are, you know, redu uh, removing aluminum and other, uh, other such uh, parameters which make it more recyclable. In terms of the traceability counterfeiting, uh, there is a lot of work going on. Um, we do not have a product as it is in the uh, open market as of yet. We did uh, come uh, partner with Topan for a product with the Indian government on counterfeiting. Uh, so that's still under discussions. So I think uh, in the due course of time, we would be uh, uh, exploring this a lot more. There is already something in the works, but uh, I think, yes, it's an area where we are also looking hard. Good, sir. We are going to be looking forward with the entire plethora of new films as well as applications. Uh, interesting to know that you just mentioned the aluminium. Is the metal aluminium uh, completely separable from laminated structures? Is it 100% possible? So we minimize it. Uh, so we can remove aluminium. We have some products which can replace aluminium and still give uh, nearly as good uh, uh, performance. Uh, still some amount of metal deposition is there, but that is so small. I think that is in the current standard, it is considered okay in terms of the recyclability concept. But yes, there are products out there and improving by the day uh, to be able to replace, uh, replace aluminum. Okay, so best we can do there. Uh, BOPT is a growing application. Any market development since you are not in that area yet? Again, clear focus. We are a BOPP company, always have been, and uh, I think there is enough scope in that segment itself. So no, no CPP, BOPP. no CPP also, no CPP. Most of CPP yes, CPP yes. So CPP, uh, we talk about BOPE, um, uh, MOPE. So there are variety of polyethylene or blown films of some combination, uh, which are becoming interesting. And uh, in terms of the cost and barrier, and I think um, there is uh, so much innovation going on in every industry that whatever was the uh, mindsets of that this may not be possible in this polymer and this polymer, I think there are no such holy cows. So there is a lot of experimentation. So definitely CPP, BOPE, MOPE, some combinations of these are in great works with the monolayer structure. And ultimately, 
seeing how we can add value to the end customer. Excellent. And from where the demand is coming, everyone is on their feet, right? I think everyone is trying to see that what is requirement and they will cater to that. <clears throat> uh, your organization has a very high global <clears throat> footprint for your products. How the exports have been? Did the logistics kind of hamper your normal uh, rate of uh, exports? Well, I think, um, you know, the COVID did bring a certain amount of hiccups in pockets. Uh, but I would say that the team has done a fantastic job of uh, managing it. And in fact, uh, uh, our strategy is uh, roughly about one third or maybe slightly less of export to the domestic. But that's not a, that's not a ratio we, we try to adhere to. It's more like wherever is the need and uh, wherever we are being able to uh, maximize the potential, uh, we go with that. Uh, supply logistics and exports. Yes, because it's long and a little bit more variables are involved. Uh, but I think, again, uh, our speciality journey in exports are, uh, are playing well. Uh, commodity export, we generally tend to avoid because of just, you know, the margins and there is, uh, uh, you know, enough market in India. So I think exports will continue to be a strong part. But then again, um, our journey is on the speciality. And I think there is good demand in export and domestic. Um, so uh, I think the bigger idea is that wherever we can find better traction with certain customers and penetrate deeper with them in a spirit of partnership, I think uh, uh, less is more. I have been hearing a lot of the raw material companies because there was a lockdown in India. So they did find a lot of markets overseas and they exported because their uh, uh, crackers were working all the time. Uh, and they found new markets, which they had never, never catered to earlier. Uh, has there been a case with the, your company also where you got into markets which you had not even uh, uh, thought of earlier? Um, no, not, not in our case because I think our customers uh, continued and uh, wherever uh, they were not working, I think uh, they, our relationship is deep enough that we, we hold on to that. And uh, uh, with whatever was open and whatever we could serve, I think... Uh, we, we could we could meet our needs. So uh, we did not venture out into anything new in terms of scratching or open, knocking on new doors at this point of time. No. Very well. So we have enough in our basket already. Um, what is your expectation for the rest of 2020 as far as uh, your products are concerned, the demand for that? Um, with a lot of humility, I would say that uh, we see the year remaining strong. Uh, we had a good March 20 ending, and I think the entire industry and some results are beginning to come out, the financial results, and uh, I think the industry has done well. I think I foresee this year to be remaining strong for us, but I think what is more important is that uh, how the, the third and the fourth quarter, and more importantly, the next year early uh, pans out. Um, with that said, I think our product strategy and our product uh, penetration right now is strong. Uh, again, with every year, the expectations go higher. And so uh, we need to do the right things this year to meet our uh, higher expectations of next year. So, Very well. so that's optimistic. Overall, de overall demand remains strong for us. And I think FMCGs and with the whole panic buying and the whole discussion you've had with many other uh, industry people, I think uh, there remains to be a strong pull and to beef up and to fill up the pipeline, which kind of emptied out a little bit uh, across all products. So I think we are, we are seeing uh, continuously uh, the demand remaining strong. Excellent. So growth is there. Uh, there's a lot of focus on sustainability, understandably so. Uh, any developments that you have done over and above what you had already planned uh, on this uh, topic? I think uh, we are in more advanced stages of the experimentation. Uh, we have uh, looked into playing with the master batches or some uh, you know, some tie-ups with some biodegradable uh, raw material suppliers and variety of combinations. Um, I wouldn't say that there's anything radically new. It's just more uh, advanced stage of where we were before on the direction of uh, biodegradable or uh, single polymer. So just continuing with that. Excellent. Of course, uh, there is the, the vertical which we initiated was also on the post-consumer waste. And the idea is to be able to have the waste collected. And for that, uh, we have strongly partnered up with the Punjab administration 
and they've been very supportive and welcoming and i think it's a win win option once we get that material then we put in our ip our knowledge into what how to convert it to and how do we use that the converted part and i think as a uh, it's a it's a uh, positive sum game there is it it has business sense it does make economic sense as well and uh, i think that segment has now started to show positive financials and i think it's only a matter of us scaling it up more and more i think that's going to be a very good example because uh, after this pandemic is like of one over and uh, that entire plastic waste is again going to come back it has kind of doused a bit for now but it has started sure. coming back with all those masks and all littering away there are forces that are coming back to say no to plastics again and your model will probably become an example for uh, uh, a lot of converters and processors and we also wanted to thank you and appreciate the a uh, 5 crore of rupees that you actually gave for csrs on your website so well done that is uh, walking uh, the talk and quite an example for all of us in the industry um, I, i think it uh, just to add uh, nidhi what what gives me a lot of joy also is that one is at a corporate group level yeah um the team in fact i got a full signal from my working level teams that we would like to put in one day salary now that that passion that thought is very motivating and inspiring and very humbling and so we did not have we just said ready if you, we are doing all of this from a company side but they said no we want to put in our two cents as well and um, we just collected that money and i think uh, those couple of lakhs uh, stand equally tall uh, with the emotions that go with it along with the corporate allocation that we have made uh, at a group level to be able to make our little contribution so yeah Very happy about that. I think in this area that is CSR is one plus one becomes eleven. It it kind of garners uh, momentum and uh, and the happiness that you actually get is more for your own That's self. Right. What it does for the others is uh, obviously uh, there. Um, one parting question I had, uh, Ramniti. You've been one location, uh, very reserved, so as to say, no acquisitions, no mergers. Uh, of course, there would have been a thought process behind it. but uh, are we expecting to see a little bit of uh, aggressiveness or uh, we will uh, kind of toe the same line so the boring answer is we'll toe the same line <laughs> and i i remember in my earlier career there was a time when every for two three years i watched people ask my at that time that company ceo what's your new strategy and he says my new strategy is that we are continuing with the old strategy <laughs> and so uh, really you know in the long race you don't need to get every now and then and i think uh, uh i think we have our hands full right now if we can execute this well slow and steady and most important is that we maintain our uh, brand image and the value add in the eyes of the customer i think uh, if that continues uh, there is good win win so i think we are okay right now very well said sir uh, we are going to be looking forward for your applications your products your new films that are going to come out in the niche sector and uh, till we talk to you again and we meet again apparently in our flexible packaging summit whenever we can hold that thank you so much for your thoughts for sharing your vision which is going to be very helpful to our industry fellows thank you ramnik ji appreciate a lot thank you nidhi for the opportunity for this discussion and i once again congratulate you and the entire elite team for uh, coming up with this uh, very um, knowledgeable platform and exchange of ideas thank you with all humility thank you very much appreciate it yeah. for more videos on insights with nithi varma please click the playlist tab on your left and please subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo on the right do press the bell icon to never miss a video